Hey garden friends, welcome back to Bloom and Wilt Gardens. My name's Alexa and I'm so happy to have you here today as we do a big seed mail unveiling. I recently put in a couple different seed orders to start working on my 2024 garden and I'm really excited to be able to share with you all of the really great unique varieties that I got to be able to plant in my Northeast Ohio garden, which where I'm growing specifically is zone 6B, but I'm also right on the border of 6A, so I kind of just like to say, I grow in zone six, but Northeast Ohio in the Great Lakes region where we have this really unique microclimate. It's been a very interesting winter. It's been the mildest winter that I've ever experienced in the 33 years that I've lived in this region. But besides all of that, we are talking about seeds today and I wanna give you lots of ideas and inspiration of all different kinds of seeds that you can grow in your home vegetable gardens right in your own backyard. So I got a lot of seeds and I wanna be able to talk about all of them with you. So depending on how long uh, this goes, I might split this video up into two parts. Make sure to look out for part two. I'm first gonna talk about my order I got from Baker Creek. This is my biggest order that I received. And then I also did one from uh, another seed company called Pine Tree, which I hadn't bought from them before, but they sent me a catalog, a seed catalog, you know, just in the mail as advertisement. And I really liked a lot of the seeds that they had. So I went and ordered from Pine Tree as well, and I also ordered from MI Gardener, but that one hasn't quite arrived yet. So me talking about MI Gardener will likely fall into the part two video. So if this is your first time um, joining me at Bloom and Wolf Gardens, leave a comment down below where you're gardening from, where you're coming from. I love to see uh, all the places where my viewers are tuning in from. Okay, so Baker Creek is an heirloom seed company. Um, they specialize in lots of rare heirloom seeds. These are not varieties that you're typically going to find in a normal box store, grocery store, you know, your average store. You're probably not gonna find these kinds of seeds. I did go a little bit overboard. <laughs> Uh, with my Baker Creek order, I got 38 different varieties, but I don't buy seeds like this in this volume every single year. Um, I do this maybe every other year, really, where I get just a ton, all kind of all at once, but and then they're going to last me for a really long time. But look at this beautiful collection. I love uh, Baker Creek's, the way that their seeds are packaged. I think it's just the beautiful pictures that they take against the black background just really makes all of this look so pretty. <laughs> there was a time when my kids really liked Pokemon cards and it was like that gotta collect them all, you gotta have all the Pokemon cards. Sometimes I feel that way about seeds and seed packets, like I gotta collect them all, gotta collect them all. But at least I do more with these and just keep them in a booklet. I actually, you know, grow the food. <laughs> so the top of my stack here, I've got the Jimmy Nardello Italian Pepper. Now this is more of a sweet pepper. Um, it is an Italian heirloom that was brought to America by the Nardello family in 1887, so that's pretty cool. And it's a long, thin-skinned frying pepper. I don't really love like super hot peppers very much. I just grow a couple of those for my husband, so we do more of the sweet peppers. Next is the Honey Boat Delicata. This is one of our favorite squash. It is so, so, so sweet. Um, and the first time I grew it and cooked it for my husband, he was like shocked at how sweet this squash was. So this one has definitely become one of our favorites. And it even says here on the back that it's one of the sweetest squash varieties in existence. So this one is really nice. I do have a little bit of a hard time growing squash in my backyard though. I have like a sandier soil and the squash bugs take out my squash every year. So I'm gonna, might be trying to grow some squash at some relatives. Uh, farms just to see if I can um, get the squash to grow because it is so good. I got this amaranth. It is called Pink Beauty and I love pink. <laughs> anything that is pink, I I just, I'm like a bee. I just, I just draw right into anything that's bright colored, especially pink. Um, and what drew me to this pink variety of amaranth was that it's um, 
a heat tolerant and tender green. So if you ever try to grow lettuce greens or spinach through the middle of the summer, uh, it's going to be very difficult and usually they go to seed because it's just too hot for those varieties. So I like to look for some alternatives for leafy greens to grow in the summer months. And this one I'm gonna try um, because it is, uh, it says it's a powerhouse of nutrition and very heat tolerant for summer. Plus it is gorgeous. So win-win. You can get normal big green zucchini seeds basically from anywhere. So that's why I really like to find unique varieties of zucchini to grow in my home garden. So this one is the zucchini long white of Pal Palermo squash. And uh, it is a bush type zucchini. It has a minty green skin and white flesh. And it also says that it's um, an attractive choice for market. So if you do any kind of a farmer's market, this kind of zucchini uh, may draw interest because it looks very different. But it says it's really good for frying and um, making into zoodles and more. So pretty excited about this variety. Okay, so this package says blackberries. However, um, on the website, these were marketed as huckleberries. And I have never grown a huckleberry. I only know of the the name Huckleberry because of Huckleberry Finn. Um, I never really once thought to think, oh, that's actually some kind of plant. But uh, so we've got the Huckleberry. It says it's an attractive two to three foot plant that yields clusters of pea-sized blackberry, superb in pies or preserves. Um, it came to the U.S. by German immigrants in 1875. So, as I understand, this is a very tiny little berry that grows within the garden season, so in one year, and they taste like blackberries. It does warn that um, you, you, have, you can only eat them when they're fully ripe. There can be no green on them, otherwise they can be um, poisonous. So, uh, if you get these, you know, go with caution and make sure to follow all the instructions about harvesting on those. More pretty purple things. So this is a carrot variety called the Lila Lu Sang Carrot. Uh, it grows in 75 days. It's a stunning European variety with deep purple skin and a vibrant orange center. Densely nutritious and great for kids gardens. So I do think these are fun. That's what drew my eye to them. I do mostly just kind of a standard orange carrot, but I like to do a couple interesting ones just to see how those do. I didn't need more cucumber seeds, but I did find a couple that um, kind of piqued my interest. So this one's called the Dragon's Egg Cucumber. And it says it's from Croatia. It's a Croatian heirloom, beautiful cream colored fruit about the size of a large egg sweet, mild, and bitter free. I just thought those looked fun. I did get a lot of different flowers and like herbs to do for tea. I'm gonna set those aside since we're kind of just focusing on the vegetables currently. Purple bumblebee tomato. So one of my favorite tomatoes, especially the cherry size, is the pink bumblebee tomato and that was actually what I was looking for when I went seed shopping. However, the pink bumblebee was not on, in stock but the purple bumblebee was. So I am going to try out this purple bumblebee tomato and see if I like that just as much as the pink bumblebee. The color pattern is that they are striped in lime green and bronzy purple with a sweet complex flavor. Next I have a lettuce variety called the Devil's Ear Lettuce. It's a 50 day to maturity variety that has a very large spreading loose leaf heads. Um, I got this one because it says that it's slow to bolt and it stands a very long time in the garden. So again, thinking about uh, our summer gardens and wanting to have continuous you know, leafy greens through the summer, what are those varieties that um, are more slower to bolt and can handle summers? So I, I knew I wanted to try growing lima beans this year and my friend Bill uh, recommended this variety called King of the Garden Lima Bean and I'm really excited to try it out. The description here is a very prolific old fashioned favorite introduced in 1883 with enormous white lima beans and uh, it is long season yields on robust vines. So the vines of these plants, I mean I guess they just they just endlessly grow and grow and grow um, over six feet tall. So I, I thought these were really good and I do prefer, um, you know, any type of beans to be more like a pole bean or a climbing variety rather than bush beans. So 
We're gonna give these a, a go for Bill. I trust his judgment. He has a high review on this variety. So that is the King of the Garden Lima Bean. I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but this variety is a squash called the Zapalito del Tronco Squash. It's an Argentinian summer or winter squash with a creamy flesh. So you could harvest this young as a summer squash or leave it on the vine longer um, where the outer skin will get hard and then you can eat it and save it for winter. So the what drew me into this one is that um, it's similar to avocado. So it says, this is also called avocado squash due to the low moisture content of the flesh making it creamy in consistency and it's a 50 day grower so it actually is supposed to grow fairly quickly so this is an interesting squash variety to try out I got two varieties of lettuces that make really small heads of lettuce and the reason that I chose these ones are because thinking about you know how our family eats meals um, it makes more sense for us to have little individual serving sizes of different foods, um, especially when it comes to lettuce. I know that like if I buy a big head of iceberg lettuce from the grocery store and I cut that all up and put it in a container, um, it doesn't really get eaten fast enough uh, in, before it starts to turn brown and then no one wants it anymore. So I was thinking if we grow uh, if we want to have any type of heading lettuce that has a little bit more crunch to it than a lot of like, just the leafy lettuces, um, these both interested me in trying. So they will grow smaller heads, but they will grow faster and they're more appropriate for like an individual serving. So I got these tennis ball lettuce and little gem lettuce. And the little gem, uh, it says it's a very small apple green romaine type heads, excellent flavor and superb heat tolerance, always good. And the tennis ball is uh, the original black seeded strain documented to have been grown at the Monticello by Thomas Jefferson. Rather loose butterhead type heads are petite, six to eight inches in diameter. So I will grow both of these as heading lettuces, but they'll be very small. And I'm interested to see, you know, how those turn out and how the family likes those. How to get more uh, beans. I, I like to try a different collection of beans every year. And this one is the Purple Teepee Bean. Uh, super productive, yielding straight purple pods for flavorful, tender snaps and very easy to harvest. This tomato variety struck my eye. I have so many different varieties of tomatoes in my seed collection and at the end of every season I always say to myself okay I'm not gonna buy more seeds I know which ones I like now I'm just gonna focus on those but then there are more that come into my purview and this was one of them the queen of the night tomato if you've been watching my channel very long you know that I really like the dark tomatoes dark purple tomatoes black tomatoes those are my favorite and so the queen of the night definitely drew my eye I mean it's just a beautiful looking tomato uh, it says it takes 80 to 90 days it's a mid-season variety and it's a salad type of tomato purple blush richly flavored and it's a three to three and a half ounce fruit. Plants are indeterminate, compact, and reach five to five and a half feet on average with blue tinged regular leaf foliage. So another tomato variety. Uh, I'm, ar like, I'm already thinking, how am I gonna grow all of these tomatoes? We'll see. I got this variety of dock. Now, if you don't know what dock is, um, typically it's a native plant. I mean, it's probably growing, if you have a, a yard, it's probably growing in your yard somewhere, especially if you have like um, some unkept areas. This is something that grows pretty easily anywhere. Um, but this variety of dock, it's called Bloody Dock. It is a perennial. And what you would do with this is you would eat the greens. You would eat the tender greens in the spring. And Doc sends down a really, really deep tap root and um, Doc also uh, spreads. It is a vigorous spreader. So this is not something that I plan to put in my vegetable garden. We have established kind of an herb, um, a big, bigger herb garden, sort of medicinal garden space that um, I'm thinking I want to put in here so it has more room to spread out. I always like to think of things that are easy to grow and that they're gonna come back every year. And for any kind of leafy green like this dock, it's really highly nutritious, lots of minerals, lots of vitamins in it, very good for you. And it's a perennial, it'll come back. So once we get it going, it'll come back every year and it looks really cool. 
I have tons of different flower varieties that I'm going to talk about on a separate video, so make sure to come back to see all of these beauties. Okay, I'm gonna do two more on today's video from my Baker Creek order, and then the next video we'll talk more about Pine Tree, and my Gardener, and the flower varieties that I got. So to wrap up today's video, we're gonna look at the Myoto eggplant. Uh, I didn't grow eggplant last year because, you know, in the years past I've grown eggplant and I just hadn't really enjoyed it. I did try to cook with it, but no one really ate the eggplant. Um, so I took a year off, but as I was looking through seeds, of course, I find things that catch my eye and are very interesting. So this is an eggplant that it says it's traditionally grown in the Maitoyo and Kanonji, hope I said that right, areas of Japan. It's a large fruit and oval shaped, teardrop shaped, and nearly black. Flesh is very tender and sweet. So I'm gonna give eggplant another try this year with this really unique variety. And the last one I'm gonna talk about today is a turnip variety. Turnips now, they aren't too exciting usually. I don't see a lot of people talking about turnips or eating turnips. I don't particularly like turnips either. I have grown them. Um, you know, because I always try to grow vegetables that I don't like to experience how they taste fresh and from my own garden, because usually when you grow your own food, it typically tastes a lot better than anything you're buying from the store. So I, any kind of vegetable that I think, oh, I don't like that vegetable, I do try to grow it. Um, and also to train my taste buds on learning to like a new thing. I'm an adult now, I can learn to like new things. And so this turnip variety, I mean, again, it's pink. I love anything pink. And this is the Asuka Akane turnip. Um, it is a Japanese turnip with slender roots and a vibrant magenta color that adds a splash of pink color to pickles, stir fries, and salads. Growers add this eye-catching turnip to root stacks and bundles for extra curb appeal at the farmer's market. So I'm gonna try out this turnip variety. I think it looks really cool. This is also something that's frost hardy. And a lot of these that I talked about, um, a lot of them are frost hardy. Um, some definitely are not, but these seed packets usually do really good to tell you on the little side here if they are frost hardy or not and some of like the uh, information like how many days it takes for it to sprout for germination, the ideal temperature for that plant to live in, um, how far you plant the seed into the soil. So like these ones is just a quarter inch, you just barely put it into the soil. Um, how far to space them. This is recommended a five inch spacing. I probably would do these closer, just me personally. I don't always follow the advice on the seed packets. You know, to get the biggest yield on any kind of plant, follow the instructions on the packet for spacing, but I typically go a little bit closer in and usually things are okay, but it's just up to you. You gotta learn, you gotta figure those things out for yourself, what you like. Um, this one is frost hardy and it tells you the minimum amount of full sun that this plant needs. So this is six to 12 hours. So all of these seed packets, they all have that same information. All right, so we went through these 18 beautiful seed varieties today, all from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. I mean, they're just beautiful. I could just look at my little seeds all day, but I need to get busy and start planting these seeds, at least some of them, um, and get them going for the spring garden. So let me know if you are growing any of these varieties or which one is new to you. What do you like the most? Which one do you want to know more about or see more of in the garden this year? Leave that in a comment down below. So make sure to connect with me on social media at Bloom and Wilt Gardens on Facebook and Instagram or at Lex in the Garden on TikTok. And finally, make sure to go to bloomandwiltgardens.com where you can subscribe to my newsletter, read blog posts, and get planting tips, as well as see what's new in the shop. All right, happy gardening season, friends. Oops. <laughs> Do something you love today and take care. Bye.